my sacrifice of praise as I lay down my life as a living sacrifice. My God, you're calling me to pray, worship and obey. Oh Lord, it's all that I can do, for the price was paid by you. Shall we sing? Let's stand together. Here we go. This is a day. This is a day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Be glad in it and be glad in it. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day. This is a day. Your turn. This is the day I the Lord have made. Come on. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Good. I will rejoice. And be glad in this. And be glad in this. This is the day. Just 
Thank you. 
Going to be celebrating somebody's birthday in a couple of days. Headline today! Millions choke the streets to honor one of America's greatest heroes. Dad! Dad! No award is too big, no gesture too small for this piece of parental perfection. Even President Truman got it on the act. Dad is awesome. Dad Don't stop there, awesome. Harry. He's also caring and strong. Yes, Dad truly is a really special guy. A special guy. I've never seen anybody who loves yeah. to stay as busy as Dad. Wrong cap. <laughs> Where is he? Behind the building. Oh, there you are. Dad's going to be 88 in a couple of days. What do you think Happy about that? Happy birthday. Wow. Happy birthday to you, Daddy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. I hope you have a lot of good stuff that I can have from you. Happy birthday to you. He's been saying he's 88 since his last birthday. And then after your 88th birthday, you'll be saying you're almost 89. Isn't that the way that goes? My goodness. Dad, we love you. Lord, thank you for Dad. Thank you that we can spend these times together with family. Thank you, Lord, for special people you bring into our lives. Thank you, Lord, that we can hold them up, that we can love them, and that we can share your goodness and your grace with them. And then watch them sharing your goodness and grace with other people. Thank you, Lord, for using us. Thank you for the people you surround us with. We love you, love you, love you, and we're grateful for Dad, grateful for special people in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Please you. be seated. Thank you. Musical interlude, por favor. do this once on stage, but it must be okay. Oh, 
salvation, for the opportunity to live this life for you. What do we say? But thank you, Lord, for every good thing you do. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. Amen. All right, before we start, Kids Church, open up your program. Everybody has program or we can get you on. Open it up. Is there money in it? Work with me. Work with me. There's money in it. No, there's not. Pull out your little Kids Church. As we mentioned last week, for those of you who are, who are here, we love our kids. We have really, really, really great kids, and we want to take really, really great care of them. And we just need more people to do a great job at that. So I'm begging you to consider serving in kids' church. It wouldn't be just you and a bunch of kids. We want it, and that's why we're doing it this way. We want at least 10 to 12 people, preferably just not us old ladies, because all us old ladies are willing to do it, and that's awesome. But we need some young blood in there, too. I'm not looking right guys, at you guys, but <clears throat> I need some young blood. So I'm begging you, just once a month with a team of other people, it would be at least three or about three helpers in there so that no one's in there by themselves, whether you're doing music or just, even if you say, okay, I don't want to be with the kids, but let me help set up jumpers, and we'll do jumpers once a month. If you say, okay, I don't really like kids, but I can play with babies, then you can say, okay, we can keep you with the babies. These, it can be conditional. So just write your name down, either on the blue tearaway or grab us afterwards. I have a, a master list of people that I want to kind of grab hold of. So if you see me coming and you're not interested, just run. Run hard, because I'm going to tackle you, and I am faster than I look. I'm wiry. So if you're interested at all, again, even just helping in one area, um, doing music for kids, doing anything. Hey, I'll bring snacks for kids, anything. Then put your name down, because we're not going to start Kids Church again until we have at least 10 to 12 people. Now, if you put your name down, I'm going to call your bluff. We need you to be consistent. We need you to be committed to actually doing it, because if we get 10 or 12 people, and then a month later we only have four, we're going to be in the same situation we're in right now. So please, please, please consider putting your name down on this so that I don't have to, like, show up at your door and knock on your window. Thanks to the guys who already asked. And yes, yes, people have already come up to me. They, oh, man, Reyes has, like, game plans and exercise plans and snack plans, and she's already got it all laid out. But uh, that's cool. I mean, we have, we have people who care, obviously we care about our kiddos, but really have been thinking about this all week and have things written down, and Lynn gave me something with a... a five by seven card with ideas written down. That's awesome. We just need more of us. Cool? So pray about that and get with one of us and put down your name. Some people I have names, but somehow I don't have phone numbers or email addresses. So write down your name and, and whatever the best way to contact you is. Maybe you guys are strategic and not giving me contact information. Yeah, I'll help. Sure. My name is Bonifacio, Bonaguidi, Rafufio. Anyway, all right. So, did you guys have a good Thanksgiving? Tony asked you, and I kind of saw, eh. But uh, we do have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? I mean, we have a lot we gripe about, but we have a lot to be thankful for, too. I don't know if you guys have ever seen The Blind Side. I like this movie. I know it's kind of an older movie. Yeah, baby. Let's eat. Come on. That rebel turkey. 
<laughs> Everyone thank your mother for driving to the store and getting this. Thank you, Mama. Food and football. Get all you want. Come on. Hustle, hustle. You gotta get back on the Going yet? Don't take my spot. Are you rushing us, Jay? SJ, sit down. No. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh, oh y'all, I forgot the potato salad. How's Ole Miss doing? They're kicking butt. One wide receiver left for Ole Miss, one corner, number 30 out. In press coverage, obviously. Sean, salad. Great, Mom. So good. Hey, Mama. Yeah, Mama. That's Pepsi in her little glass. Yes, that's Pepsi. She just wants to feel fancy with her Pepsi. Birdsong and Mawinney on the tackle. Ole Miss 5 of 10 on third down from the 26. Third down and 6 for the Reds. You want to do that? Thanksgiving. <laughs> wow. Why are we even in here? Shh. <laughs> Shall we say grace? Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the many blessings on this family. We thank you for bringing us a new friend. And we <laughs> ask that you look after us on this holiday season, that we may never forget how very fortunate we are. Amen. Amen. Let's check the score. Up by 10. <laughs> we do have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? But... Sometimes our family gatherings aren't quite so peaceful. They're a little confusing. They're a little stressful. Sometimes it can be a little chaotic. Uh, sometimes, again, life is just hard. And sometimes it can be a bit more than we can handle. <laughs> he passed out. <laughs> and then he woke up just enough time to pass out one more time. And even when we think we have it all together, even when we, we think life is going okay, sometimes we're in for a rude awakening. <laughs> Regardless of whether you feel like life is going well or you feel like the holidays have been a little more stressful than you care for, we know that we can be thankful anyway. Whether life is good or life doesn't feel so good, we can still be thankful because God gives us both happy times and hard times for his purpose. And none of us likes hard times. We don't have to pretend that we like hard times, but we can learn to accept them and even appreciate them when we realize that during the hard times, God is working in you to test you, to teach you, and to toughen you up. God doesn't want sissy kids. God wants strong kids. And during the hard times, we see this over and over and over in Scripture, that during the hard times, we can often learn the most. We can often grow the most. And even though we wish God would just protect us from the hard times, we know we do. Most of the prayers that we pray for ourselves and most of the prayers that we pray for other people are to either protect them from the hard times or get them out of the hard times. It's for money, it's for health, it's for good relationships. It's to keep us out of the struggle. And if you watch most TV preachers, boy, they teach you that if you just name it and claim it, you just pray that God will keep you out of the struggles, he will. But if we look in Scripture, we know that that's just not the case. Think about whatever Bible character, whatever Bible you know, uh, person from days of old that you respect, that you admire, 
Think about whether their life was tough or whether their life was smooth sailing. You guys know I love John the Baptist. Did he have an easy life? Psh. But he was awesome. Think about any godly man or woman in the Bible. Think about them. I dare you to try to name someone, anyone, who had a nice, easy, cush life if they were really serving the Lord. That's just not the way God works. Whether Daniel, where did Daniel end up? In the lion's den. Shadrach and Benny, that's what we call them in kids' church. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Speaking of kids' church, just kidding. Shadrach and Benny in the fiery furnace. Job, we all know Job. John the Baptist. Stephen, the first martyr, the first one killed for his faith. Stoned, as Tony would say, not the good kind. With That's what you do say. That's what you do say. Now, does God usually tell you why you're going through the hard times? We always say, why, God, why? Does he answer and say, well, this is why you're going through the hard times. God doesn't tell us why. God didn't tell John the Baptist why. God didn't tell any of these guys why. He just let them go through it to hopefully learn from it. But one of the cool things in Deuteronomy chapter 8, it's one of the very rare times, the only time I can even remember, one of the rare times that God actually told them why. Israel had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Years. You ever feel like you've wasted your life or wasted time in your life or wasted a chapter in your life? Can you imagine wandering through the wilderness for 40 years? Talk about camping. Man, Tony wouldn't be able to take two days camping, not even four hours. 40 years of camping that you didn't even really hardly prepare for. 40 years, winter and summer and bugs and poop and all sorts of stuff for 40 years. And then again, in this crazy glimpse that God gave us of he told Moses why he let Israel struggle for 40 years. So that when we're struggling, we can look at the lessons that God tried to teach them and hopefully we can be a little smarter than they are or were. During hard times, God is working in you to do three things. He's working in you to test you, to teach you, and to toughen you. First, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. God said, through Moses, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years. Why? To humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. Have you ever thought that when you're going through the tough times, God might be testing you to see whether you would still follow him even when times are tough, even when you can hardly get yourself out of bed, even when you don't want to face the day, even when you don't want to face that person or face that job or face that bill in the mail? Maybe God is giving you a tough time to test you to see whether you will keep his commands. It's all about obedience. It's all about just obeying him every single Sunday that we get up and talk. It's all about figure out what God wants you to do in this life and do it. We just try to figure out creative ways to say it because really it all comes down to that. Whether you're going to, through a happy time or a hard time, Figure out what God wants you to do. It's not like he hides his will. It's not like he makes it a secret of what he wants us to do. Figure out what it is and just do it. Whether you feel great or you feel awful, whether you are just as happy as happy can be or whether you are more depressed than you've ever been in your life, figure out what God wants you to do and do it. God's saying that when he gives us tough times, Maybe it's because he wants to test us so that we know what's in our heart. God, God already knows what's in our heart so that we know what's in our heart and so that we can see when the squeeze is on. Tony has said before that we're like sponges. And when we get squeezed, whatever's on the inside comes out. I don't like that because usually when I get squeezed, it comes out of me. Shh. Don't tell. When I get squeezed, I'll get grumpy, I'll get, I'll get depressed, I'll get whatever. 
God tests us through the tough times to see whether we'll follow him or not. During hard times, God is working in you not only to test you, but to teach you. He continues in verse 3. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna. Do you ever think, we always think of God like Santa Claus. God's the one who feeds us, and he does. But this says that God can cause us to hunger. God could have caused Israel to never hunger. But he intentionally caused Israel to be discontent. Does it feel good when you're hungry? You've seen the Snickers commercials. It doesn't feel good to be hungry. We get grouchy when we're hungry, too. God caused them to go through the tough time. Why? To teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. God uses our tough times to test us. God uses our tough times to teach us. And during hard times, God also uses our tough times to toughen us. Us. Do you want your kids to be sissies or you want your kids to be strong in the Lord? You want your kids to be strong, right? You want them to be able to stand up to peer pressure. I don't mean strong like a tough boy, like a bully. But we want we don't want we, we don't want to be weak. We want to be strong, and God wants us to be strong. He continues on in verse 5. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. We always pray to get out of the tough times. And it's not bad to pray to get out of the tough times, but even more importantly, let's pray that we will learn in the tough times, that we we can accept, if not appreciate, the tough times, because in the tough times, God is working in us to test us. How do we do? To teach us. Do we learn, really? And to toughen us up. Now, that's God's part. That all sounds good. We could just pray right now and go home and feel good that during our tough times, God is working in us. But we have a responsibility. This Christian life isn't just about sitting back and letting God do whatever God's trying to do in our life, and we just kind of, oh, cool, God, thanks, God. I mean, it's cool that God cares enough about us to try to test us and to teach us and to toughen us. But how we respond, that's big. That's big, and it's either going to really, really, really help us or it's going to really, really, really hurt us because it's not all about what God does. It's about what we do in response. And God says, continuing in this passage, God says we better be careful not to forget him and not to fail him. After God explained through Moses to Israel why God let them struggle for 40 years, He said, guys, I was testing you, I was teaching you, and I was toughening you up. Then he says in verse 11, be careful, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving to you to this day, giving you this day. Otherwise, if you forget God and you fail God, otherwise, after you eat and you're satisfied, After you build your houses and you settle down, and when your herds and your flocks grow large and your silver and your gold increase, and all that you have is multiplied, once God blesses you in all of this, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Now that word forget, this is just a pause. Is God saying that we're going to forget any remembrance of him? If it says, don't forget the Lord your God. He's saying, you're going to quit considering him. When the Bible says to forgive and forget, does God expect you to have no recollection of things that people have done to you? No. He's saying, don't consider it against them. When the Bible says that God has forgiven our sins and forgotten them, does that mean that he has no recollection of the things that we've done? I've heard preachers say that before, that you'll pray, God, I'm sorry again that I did that. And he'll say, did what? Like God has some lapse of memory. that he Really, that he just doesn't remember the things that we've done to hurt him? 
No, he just doesn't consider it against us. That's what the word forget means. He doesn't think we're going to just forget that God exists, but that we're going to quit considering all that he's done for us. And then in verse 17, you may say to yourself, my power, my strength, the strength of my hands has produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. If you ever forget the Lord your God, you go your own way, you follow other gods, you worship them, you bow down to them, or you just forget God and do your own thing your own way, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Oh, but God is a God of love and God doesn't want to hurt us. God's love has conditions. If God's love didn't have conditions, everyone would be in heaven. They're not. God says, I love you and I will forgive. I will unconditionally forgive everything you've done. But you have to come to me. You have to repent, turn away from your sins. We act like God just forgives everybody automatically. He says his love has conditions. Verse 20, like the nations the Lord, the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed. For what? For not obeying the Lord your God. What did I say at the beginning? It all comes down to obedience. If we just obeyed him, if we just read God's word and did what he said, shoot, we wouldn't even have to come together. Well, I shouldn't say that. You guys are going to say, okay, we'll do it, we'll do it. But really, what are we put on this earth to do? To glorify God. How do we do that? That's our one task. We do that in two ways. By coming to Christ and by becoming more like Christ. And what are the three things that we say we should do to come to Christ and become more like Christ? Get saved, get soaked, and get serious. Do we forget God? Yes. Meaning, we, we don't consider him. We won't admit that. Not out loud for sure. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, do we quit considering God things? Shoot, I do. I'll go through the whole day sometimes and I'll think, wow, you know, I might have spouted off a few little token prayers. I don't mean to belittle prayers. I don't mean to belittle little prayers. But you know what I mean. We have 24 hours in every day. Let's say we sleep through eight of those. We probably don't. 16 hours of every day. What do we get done for God? What do we really do for God? How much of those 16 hours, how much do we really consider God? Whether we're living the kind of life that God wants us to live, whether we're accomplishing for God what he would have us accomplish. Do we fail God? All the time. All the time. But what do we do about it? That's what he was telling Israel. He was saying, look, I gave you these tough times for a reason. I let you struggle. God caused a lot of the struggle. Why? To test them. He wants to test us. To teach them. He wants to teach us. And to toughen them up. So what do we do about it? How do we respond? God said, because of all those things, I want you to make sure to not forget me and to not fail me. And we can summarize those two words and to follow me that's it what did jesus say when he walked up to the disciples and he picked his disciples he didn't say okay repent of your sin and i'm gonna forgive you and then give your whole heart to me and ask me to come into your heart and all the phrases that we tend to use jesus said hey andrew follow me hey simon follow me hey matthew follow me what does god want us to do follow him we're on this earth for one purpose, to glorify God. How do we glorify God? By coming to Christ and becoming more like Christ. How do we do that? I'm so glad you asked. By getting saved, by getting soaked, and getting serious. If we're not getting saved, getting soaked, and getting serious, we only get saved once. But make sure you really got saved. It's not just a matter of praying a prayer. These blue books are cool. 
because they're a simple gospel presentation. But you don't get saved by putting your name in a blue book. You get saved by following Jesus, by humbling yourself and begging him to forgive you. We act like, again, God's just up there like Santa Claus, like the Easter Bunny, just passing out his love and his grace and his forgiveness, and we don't have to do anything in response. We do. We have to turn from our sin and ask him for forgiveness. If we haven't been saved, psh, none of this matters. Get saved. If you have any question of what that means, come to us. Go to your parents. Go to any one of us. Say, hey, what does that mean? Get saved. What does it mean to get soaked? <coughs> get baptized. Follow him. That's what Jesus said to do. If we're not following him in baptism, how are we really following him? Get saved, get soaked, get serious. And to get serious means figuring out what he asks us to do, what he tells us to do, and doing it. If we're not serious in our Christian life, coming to church is pointless. If we're not serious about our Christian life, reading the Bible is pointless. If we're not serious about our Christian life, praying is pointless. Doing religious things doesn't count. Humbling ourselves before God and begging him to forgive us and begging him to use us and then being usable, being available, serving. If you, if you feel like this is your church home, you should have a ministry or two or three. If someone were to say, oh, you go to that church, what do you do there? Oh, man, you should say, oh, well, I do this, and then I, I do this, and then I go in on Saturdays, and I do this, and then on Wednesday nights we do that, and then I help by doing this. Oh, I go, I listen. That's cool. That's cool that you come and listen. But if this is your family and you're serious about following God, man, roll up your sleeves and get after it. Let's not waste our life. Man, Dad's going to be old soon. Dad's old. <laughs> he's going to be mad at me. No, he's proud of it. That's cool. That's awesome. I hope we get old soon if, we're not, if we don't go to be with the Lord sooner. What are we doing with our days? How we spend our time is how we spend our life. Are we wasting it or are we investing it? Really? If you don't want to get involved in kids' church and you want to do something else, just put it on the blue card. But get involved with ministry. Get involved with something. If this is your church, you ought to get involved with ministry here. If somewhere else is your church, get involved with ministry there. Jump in with all four feet. Cool? Any way that we can help you, let us know. But this is what we're trying to help you do. Get saved, get soaked, and get serious. Whichever step you want to do, you fill it out there. Cool? Let's get serious for God this year. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this church. God, please help us see what to do. God, we don't want to waste our time. God, we don't want to waste your resources. God, we want to invest our lives, our time, our treasures, our talent. God, we want to recognize that you are the one who has given us all of those things. God, help us not waste them. Help us invest them in you. Not in ourselves, but in you. God, help us see how to do that. God, thank you for these people. God, thank you that they love you. They want to come and hear your word. Help us encourage them and help them do that to the best of their ability and their availability. God, we love you. We want to please you. We want to honor you. We want to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. I will testify. I will sing songs of jubilation. I will testify. I will testify. Because I'm trusting in the name of the one who gave his life.
shall not be moved like a tree planted by the water I shall not be moved
sing praises to the Lord, tell of his mercy, let all that has breath praise the Lord. Sing of his mercy, majesty and might, sing of his kindness, he is our Sing praises to the Lord in the sanctuary. 